Have you ever wanted to create a query with information for a calendar and then abracadabra, the calendar is done? I'm going to show you how to make that happen. Hi, this is Crystal. This database has two sets of tables. First is companies that have jobs to deliver or a service to perform. The companies table relates to the jobs table on comp ID. The companies table also relates to the addresses table on comp ID. Next are unrelated tables with contact information and appointments. There are some sample queries you can test with and then dissect to see how they work. The macros make it easy to launch code. MCR underscore calendar from query prompts for the name of a query you want to make a calendar for. The only requirement is that the query must have a field called CalDate. This field needs to be sorted in ascending order. Only one month for the calendar report will be generated, so whatever is the first date for the query determines the month that the calendar will be for. If dates are not sorted, entries will be missed. The macro to open the calendar folder launches code to open the default folder for calendars that are generated. This will be a directory called backslash calendar below the current project path. The module called mod underscore HTML calendar report contains all the code you need to bring this feature into a database you create or to add on to a database that you use. Here are the field names that the calendar code is looking for. CalDate, CalTitle, Text1, Text2, and Text3. All you have to do is use these field names in your query and sort by the calendar date to make the calendar work. CalDate is the date of an activity and is the only required piece of information. CalTitle, if specified, will be written above the month and year for the calendar when it is displayed. Text1, Text2, and Text3 specify what gets written onto each day. These three pieces of information are also color-coded, and alternating lines can have different colors too. The QCalendar underscore deliveries query shows 17 records where deliveries need to be made for different dates. While it is nice to have a list like this, visualizing this data on a calendar is even more useful. Is it really that easy? Can you really go from a query to a calendar that fast? Almost. First, copy the name of the query you want to see a calendar for. Right-click on the query name and choose Rename, or press F2 to rename. Then just copy the query name and press Escape to not really change the name. I am copying QCalendar underscore deliveries. The reason I do this is just to make sure I don't type it in wrong, and it's right there, so it's also quicker. This query has what the calendar is looking for. Then run the macro called mcr underscore calendar from query, which runs the code to ask for a query name and create the HTML calendar. The code asks for the name of a query. I paste what I copied, qcalendar underscore deliveries. Then the create HTML calendar code is launched, and that query name is passed as a parameter. The create HTML calendar function can have two parameters. The name of a query or an SQL statement must be specified. Optionally, the path and or file name or part of a file name can be specified. So what happens if you just give it a query name? The file name is automatically assigned based on the calendar title, the month and year for the calendar, and then a time date code for when the calendar was generated. The extension will be htm. Where does the calendar go? The folder, if not specified, will be a folder called calendar under the current project path. This calendar shows the company code, quantity, and address for deliveries on each day. In test 4, 
SQL is constructed, and then just a file name but no path. The calendar will be put into the default calendar directory. To run a sub, just click in it and press the F5 key. My report name.html is the name of the file, which is the only thing specified. In test 2, a query name and jobs, which will be interpreted as part of the file name, is specified. Since no file extension was specified, the code adds meaningful information to the file name, such as the month and year for the calendar and YYMMDD-HHNN for the date and time that the calendar was generated. It then adds an HTM file extension. The jobs calendar shows company code, the quantity ordered, and the price. It does not show what was ordered. You can decide whatever you want to show on the calendar days based on how you define the query. QCalendar Text 1 only shows when appointments are scheduled and is sorted by the date time of the appointment. The See Appointment table only has data in one month, so no criteria needs to be specified. Maybe you don't want three separate colors on each row. You can combine everything you want to one of the text fields. The QCalendar Summary Query shows a lot of information only for Text 1. Another macro to make it easy for you is the macro to open the calendar folder. This calls the Open Calendar Folder procedure. This code sets a variable called SPath to the calendar directory below the current project path. It then uses Follow Hyperlink to open that folder so you can see the files that the calendar program has created. If you wish to dig in deeper, you can experiment with the colors by modifying Set the Colors, which assigns values for the module level array of strings for color. One or two represents an odd or even row. One to three is the color for each piece of information. If you wish to surround this process with a loop to make more files, and possibly an index file too, you can do that. What if your query has parameters? Not much testing was done, so there might need to be some changes, but here is what happens. You are prompted to fill the parameters. Run the parameter query to ask for a year, year, month, month. I enter 1708. This is 17 for 2017 and 08 for August. This shows all the data for August 2017. The other parameter query prompts for a date. In this case, all days starting with the specified date will be displayed on the calendar for that month. As you can see, August has some deliveries before the 10th, but they're not showing up on this calendar. And you can also see the criteria that was used in the header. So, wrapping up, if you have a query and you want a calendar, this is just about as easy as it gets. Just import the module into your database and use one of the examples to create the calendar that you need. Remember what to call the fields in your calendar query and sort by the date. Thanks for joining me. Please subscribe, like, comment, and share with your friends. Through sharing, we will all get better.